conventional sized line through top hook pole bait. There'll be a vinyl tube and a space to put a line all the way through, tie it off to the hook, and then there'll be a spot for the hook to go into this. Two exposed points, fish bites it, gets hooked, pulls the hook out of the bait. You're just fighting a fish with a treble hook and the bait's up here. It's a thing today. All the cool companies are doing stuff like this now. So let's just make this thing. Wood. Thinking, oh, one day. 10.38, wow, 10.39 now, wow. A little late today. I'm thinking maple, if nothing else poplar, of course. I have some sugar maple. Sugar maple's lighter than hard maple. That's a good in-between. This could totally be hard maple, Never mind. I don't care. I'm gonna use it and it's gonna work. You just gotta make it work. I caught fish yesterday, by the way. Not bragging or anything, but the bonus fishing segment of this video is gonna be dope. Totally hard maple. This is hard maple. Let's go cut it out. So I think, it's just my opinion, there's a lot of opinions in bait making that conflict and stuff, so you got a different one. By now I don't really care. I think that pole baits like these should be left squared off. Mm, controversy. This one, right now, just so happens to be too wide. It's not square. I want, I'm gonna be looking at the back here, and I want it to be as wide as it is tall, so I gotta Squeeze this in a bit. And I'm actually gonna measure this. Yeah. I've learned to sit in one spot and just look for the tool. Like, I look around long enough, I'll find it. I shouldn't get up and start running around everywhere. That's a solid tip. Just sit there and look. Don't get up and you'll find it. So it's exactly a half inch tall. So there's my line. And I gotta go cut that. Now I'm going to go for a perfect circle on the back here and have those same transfers from that circle go all the way around every edge. What I'll end up doing for this back part here is drilling a big, deep hole that accepts the soft plastic twister tail on the back and putting something in there that secures it, like a twist lock or just a, it could be anything. It could be a bent wire, just a, it, it'll look a lot different than what my finger's doing right there, but just a bent wire with a hook, a barb thing that grabs the, the plastic. Okay, I'm gonna keep sanding. You know, a lot of the time while fishing, I think I wish I had something like this. Hooks on the top, two barbs coming out, line through, twister tail that's just, even when I'm not reeling, I know it's moving, and it gets to the bottom, this thing's gonna be heavy, it's gonna sink hard. This might be really good. Next up, lead holes, pilot holes, we're drilling holes. By the way, this is how cylindrical that back piece came out, or the back came out. I think a 3 8 inch hole will accept the Kellen's grub I'm using. Yeah, I'll be able to stuff it in there for sure. That is center. Poke it, poke the center. That was more of a stab. This thing's sharp, like it's grabby sharp, like a hook point. I get so nervous when I like put pressure on stuff with it. I don't know why I put that over there. I'm still using it. You ever do that? I'm sure you do. Now you need a center line down the center of the belly. I should do this more often when I'm making lures, but I don't. That's the line that every lead hole will be drilled on. I'll probably be using 3 8 inch holes. This is a half inch wide. And we're gonna get two. Yeah, this is maple. 
So we're just gonna do two. One right there, one right there. So we marked, have to poke, stab. Just kidding. I'm fine. That was a, that was a joke. I'm sorry if I scared you. <laughs> April Fools, by the way. It's April 2nd here, so never mind. That's not April Fools. And then line through. I need to think for a second. Vinyl tubing. I have some of that right here. This bait needs a slot. Slot for the hook to go into. And the hooks are gonna be back yonder. But you have to visualize everything. If you go to, I can't drill the soft plastic slot too far because I need something for the hook to be into as well. There'll be a channel all along the top of this bait's head, or at back, it's back. And then a deeper spot for one of the hook points to set into. Magnet! We could use magnets for this bait. I have neodymium magnets. Yep. We're going all out. These are these are tiny ones, that big. So we'll use one of those, and that is what's going to keep the hook where it needs to be. It's not gonna keep the hook in place. It's just gonna keep the hook where it needs to be. The hook will just kind of snap into place. The way that the channel is and the hook point slot that goes deeper, that's what's gonna hold the hook in place. I might have issues with it like not coming off if a fish bites it, but I'm, okay, I'm gonna make marks all over this, and I don't want to explain what I'm doing yet. Makita! Makita, where are you? Makita, I think she's in the house. I'm gonna go get her. So this is just gonna be angled up as best as I can. Sometimes you just have to hope that you're gonna do it correctly and do it. So we got the bottom here. That's where the two lead holes are gonna be. Center point on the back there for the big hole that accepts the soft plastic. And then there's a slot up here. And I eyeballed and marked these two marks over here. And then that's the center line for the hook to be set in. And then deeper back here for the hook point to go into. I just drilled the hole for the line through part. It's actually going to be this big. I just drilled a small one with a 16th inch bit. So I got a lot of carving left to do to fit a hook into the top of this bait. I'm going to put this into a vise. Are you guys proud of me or what? I just made that decision just now. Safety. I need a sharper bit. That was getting a little iffy. Okay. Not too bad. There's a hole and the tube fits. It's not even gonna go all the way through, so right there is perfect. I'm just gonna shave that off with a razor. That's just to keep the line safe and it's not gonna cut on an edge or anything. Rimmel time, one day. I use this all the time on wood. It's a big cutoff bit, but I like it. It's nice and big, so it's controllable. You would think the opposite, but not in this case. Bigger the better for a Dremel bit, am I right? Maybe I'm wrong. Instantly burns that wood if you touch it, but I cut that slot, so it did its job. Now I'm gonna put on a skinnier little thing. A little burr bit, little circle. Little circle burr might be what it's called. So I need to go straight down with something. It needs to be bigger than this because it has to cut its own hole on the way down. Careful not to start a fire. It's not going to be pretty on the inside, but we just need this hook to fit. It's close, like that hook point's actually just on the edge of something. Once that falls in there, that's what I need. I'm gonna then drill a hole that's the size of the magnet, or maybe a slot. Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> Sorry, I just had a weird moment. Like a slot where you put the magnet down in that way. Eh, it grabs better that way. It doesn't grab very much when it's like that. It grabs a little bit. It wants to be like that. So I'm gonna put it like that. All right, back to the Dremel. Would I prefer that to sit deeper? It's a lot of exposed hook point. It could sit deeper. Goodness gracious, decisions, decisions. It comes out decently. 
Well, I have it where I've decided it's going to be now, and I'm going to mark where that neodymium magnet needs to go, figure out the diameter of one of these. Quarter? You're probably a quarter. Yeah, you're a quarter. And it's gonna go right there. All right, I have to do one of these things where I start it with a knife, because that's gonna skip around everywhere and really ruin the bait. Nothing worse than a drill bit just skipping around everywhere, destroying everything that you just did. And you're just like <clears throat> struggling to keep it still and it's not. It's a panic state. Whenever you're working on stuff with your hands, you don't want to reach the panic state because <laughs> it's so stressful watching this little bait's life flash before its eyes. Whoa. Oh, I have to fix that now. Oh man, I'm just gonna start with a smaller bit and do it responsibly. Kind of panicking, kind of panicking. I've reached the panic state. <laughs> Why? Okay, I don't think the disaster has been avoided. Like that's some chippage right there. Right there, that, it's not that big of a deal. Super glue baking soda, right? Well, we've come this far, so let's make sure we get this magnet in there. Absolute genius using a piece of steel to place a magnet. Bob Saget. Oh, Bob Saget. What? <laughs> oh, come on. Good thing that super glue comes with extra lids. Absolutely genius. Thank you, Starbond. Sloppy doofuses like me can use your glue still. Thank you. Nice. The hook stays where it should be because of that magnet. That's pretty awesome. That feels like it was made for it. It really does. It pops out. Nice. I'm not gonna put the vinyl tube in until the bait's kind of finished and clear coated and I can drill that out again. And I have to be careful with the clear coat though. It's gotta come right up to the edge of this stuff, but not in this slot. The super glue is what's gonna seal everything inside of this slot and make it waterproof. So let's move on to the rest of the stuff I need to carve on this. That took a while. What time is it? 11.35. We gotta get moving. We got fish to catch. Lead holes. 3 8 inch bit. This is a small bait. Let's get this in here. Have some control. Keep my fingers. There we go. I'm, I'm gonna be in your way a little bit. I, I gotta see this. Seeing what you're doing is important. I could move the camera, but I'm working here, so. I need to be really careful not to come through the other side with these lead holes, and I didn't. And that's gonna be plenty of lead for this maple. Dang it, second one day of the year. Is this the second one day of the year? This is, or this third? I don't know, I forgot to plug in my lead pot though. Actually, I didn't. That, that was good timing, because I still have to drill out a hole in the back, a 3 8 inch hole right here. I'm gonna look at this for a while and make sure it's straight up and down because I'm gonna bring it under this 3 8 inch bit and drill that hole and it can't be crooked. So just look at it for a while. That should do her. Here we go. Boom. That was clean. So even, my goodness. Look at what I did. It's so even. I need to stop making you guys look at that hole. Okay. All right, now that just took less than a minute, so I, I have to wait for that lead pot to heat up. While the lead pot's heating up, by the way, this is how that soft tail is gonna fit in there. It's a pretty tight fit, but you can always trim it down. Lead's hot. Gonna super glue baking soda up these holes, make them nice and smooth. Starting to wonder what I'm gonna paint this. 
I still have that airbrush with the too small of a nozzle, so maybe I won't do a bunch of airbrushing. Maybe I'll use a lure tape foil, you know? Time to cover the whole thing in super glue. That is a common practice on this channel. I feel like I'm not really talking this episode at all. I probably am, but I'm concentrating. Never made a lure like this before and I want it to be good, but I got a feeling it's gonna be good. I'm probably saying that too much. I'm really hyping up this lure. I'm gonna backtrack a bit and be like, eh, whatever. We'll see how it does. Let's make sure this hook still fits. Okay, um, am I just doing it wrong? It is sitting a little high now. I'm going to bend this hook down a little bit. Just this point. Just a smidget. Okay, it seems I have made things worse. Well, there's no going back after that, is there? <laughs> this better, that better have worked. Yeah, that worked. Now it is absolutely perfect, and it's still it's gonna stay right there. Perfect, okay, let's go paint this thing. Starting with white that I had to mix myself. That's annoying. And then you have to heat set it because the paint's so thin. It's like I'm actually airbrushing. How annoying. I like, I generally like to cheat when I'm airbrushing and spray really thick paint. Um, but yeah, like I said in the last video, this airbrush, the needle and the nozzle is too small with compared to what I'm used to. Mainly just making sure I'm getting a really bright white belly. I wanna cover up those lead holes with white. Okay, next up is some blood red. And I think it's gonna be on the flank and the top. This paint's already super thin, it's like ink. Convenient. I am not getting full atomization. No. Gee. My bait. It's getting ruined. Maybe I'm just picky. I don't know, but I don't want to go any further with this airbrush because I don't like how that's not fully atomized paint. Like there's little speckles and stuff. Maybe you can't see it. I can, I don't like it. I'm not gonna ruin it any further. I'm going to use a lure tape. And conveniently enough, I drew out a stencil of the outline of this bait. Bait. Before I shaped it and everything. Um, I'm gonna cut on the inside of this line transfer it to some copper scales as the lure tape. And I have a feeling this is gonna look stellar. I've put the airbrush completely away. There won't be a black eye socket or anything. I'm just gonna stick some nice big eyes on this when it's done. And I'm gonna try to do this tape very cleanly. All right, scale direction. Sometimes this can be a little hard to orient correctly, but we want it this way on the bait, so I have to put that, trace it like that. Just talk to yourself a lot and it usually works out. Are you guys even in frame? Oh, you guys are falling down because my tripod sucks. Sorry, but I need you guys to focus. I need to apply this very cleanly too. I'm not gonna rely on paint to hide the seams. I'm just gonna apply this and heat set it, and that's what will be for this bait. Propane torch is on hand. I'm gonna peel this off nicely. There we go. Set this on here perfectly. Fair enough. The Translucent part of this tape is extremely flexible. It's like saran wrap, but when you get it hot, it just forms right to what's under it. So I like to get it started, rub it on there quite a bit, bring it down the edges a bit. I really hope that paint was dry that I just put this over. And then hit it with a torch. Let it fall as it's falling, then press it on. Like you're trying to get it to fall. This stuff isn't that common. I don't know why I'm explaining these techniques <laughs> so detailed. I, I don't think many of you even have this kind of lure tape stuff. It's pretty specialized. I get it from a guy in Germany. I should advertise for him really quick. One sec, let me get this on here. He just sends it to me. I don't buy it from him. I don't know how to buy it from him. Might be straight from his website. Right here. www.micasolutions.de That's his logo. Okay, that's... That's what this stuff is. I mean, he sent me lure tape when like, I was a nobody. That guy's awesome. Yeah, he sent me lure tape like over two years ago. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna get the other side done here, but this is how this turned out. That is actually a very interesting color. The red flank and then copper scales and the big eyeball goes right there. This is going to look decent. Oh man, here we go. I'm breaking out the Dead Meat Customs. And sorry, Matt, 
Matt's your name, right? I didn't get my bait finished in time for the uh, autism awareness challenge or contest or whatever it is. I'm sorry. If you do it again next year, I will make certain to get one done. He literally gave me some eyeballs that had Freddie Mercury on them. You know, the classic Freddie Mercury stance and he's singing and stuff. Might be appropriate for this bait, I don't know. Can you guys see that? You know, Radio Gaga? Seems a little out of place. The colors don't match. I shouldn't use these yet. How about these? He gave me some oddly shaped eyes and I don't have sockets on this bait, so let, let's let use these. I just need to find a couple that match. They're a little big. <laughs> no, they go this way. I'm gonna use these with the red. I swear I'll only drop them 12 more times. Yep. Wow. Peel the dust and the hair off. Just like that. Is that looking goofy? Oh my gosh. Ah! <laughs> I just go anger management right there. Start smacking. Me. I think just like that. Little angle down. Yeah. That's interesting. Let's glue those on. I'm gonna apply some glue to the back of the eye this time because I don't really know where I'm setting this. I mean, I know, but I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Okay, don't drop it this time. You have glue on the back. It's gonna get all dusty and hairy. Boom. It's on there. Let me make it look mad. Is it looking mad? Yeah, that looks mad. Talk about a pole bait. I mean, it would look better if there was some black around the, the eye, like the socket, but blends in pretty well. It, I'm liking it. Let's get onto the clear coat. As for the clear coat, I use a sacrificial brush, and it's I've been sacrificing this brush for years now, but it's just my crappy brush that I do stuff like this with. I'm gonna be brushing it on, and I'm staying away from the hook slot on the top and the soft plastic hole in the back. Being careful getting right up to the edge there. First things first, it's kind of like masking off, but you're applying it. That way I can just glob it on everywhere else. A light right behind your head when you're doing stuff like this is your friend because you can see the glare and then you can see right where you're not putting it. You definitely want to be putting it where you're not putting it. It's a funny way of saying you want full coverage. I'm not gonna let this drip for very long either. A little bit of clear coat built up around the nose. That might be good. It's gonna come in contact with the bottom a bit. Oh gosh. Try not to smack your bait on things too once you put the clear coat on. Okay, I'm gonna hold this by hand over by the UV tank. Have the lights turned on. And once I get a good drip and it looks pretty even, I'm gonna put it in there really quick and get it set. Then I'm gonna take it off this clamp and hang it up in there for half an hour. Boom. We're setting. It's set. Just like that. It won't drip anymore. There. See you guys in a half an hour. I'm feeling good about this bait. I'm gonna get a fish. We are about to tie this thing up. It's a beautiful day out. It's like 60 degrees right now. I got the big door open. Gorgeous. Woohoo! Woohoo! Okay, it's probably not entirely necessary, but I'm gonna get some super glue in there. If this tail goes flying off, that'd be kind of pathetic. I actually don't have another one of these, so I am gluing it. Oh, I should mention I'm not gonna do the vinyl tube thing. I'm just gonna drill a hole. There's enough clear coat right there and the bait's not gonna get cut on clear coat, so. That'll work. Get a good look at that. Wow, that worked out. That worked out better than I thought it would, actually. Let's go see how it works and let's catch a fish for once. We are here. Yesterday was a good day here. So I'm back. We got the line through. I'm feeling good about this. Unfortunately, this thing has a tendency to come up to the right. It probably is because the weight is not centered. Maybe. Or that there's a lot of weight on the top and because the weight's not perfectly centered on the bottom, it's coming off balance. The line tie is centered, I can tell. It's gotta be something like that. The tail's centered. It's not wanting to kick off to one direction. I, 
I think it's something about the balance of the weight in this bait, which is not really fixable. I'll deal with it. It's not so severe, I, like I can't fish with it. I'll deal with it, but kind of annoying. Really all it's forcing me to do is slow down. I just can't rip it in or else it'll come up. If you go really slow, like about this speed, it's going to be straight up and down, so. Which is a good thing. I need to slow down here. The water temperatures are still low, so these fish are slow. Oh, bluegill is following my bait. We'll see. I'll go check it out. It's a pretty steep incline <laughs> along the edge here. Maybe. You just got to try every spot, you know. New pond. Same bait. We're not giving up. We were even going in the creek for a while there. This pond can have its days, let me tell you. I think all that spray from the bait caster just went in my mouth. Okay, look who it is. It's the consolation for not catching any fish dog. That way you guys like it when I don't catch a fish, you can see Chip. Here he is, Chip. Look at him go. Woo! Get out of the garbage. Get, get out of the garbage. Chip. Chip, get out of the garbage. Stop. Whoa, whoa, whoa! He's one of those dogs that if you came over to my house, you have to sign papers. You have to be ready to experience some physical trauma. He's gonna maul you with love. Chip, sit. Just, just sit. Good boy, relax. So yesterday, no fish. Lots of fishing, no fish. The day before that, or was it two days before that? Lots of fishing and fish. Not a ton of fish, but quality fish. How'd the lure work? You know, thinking back and the, the shape and the design of the bait, I was, I regret putting the hook on the top. I think a line through with the treble, chip stop eating stuff down the bottom, that probably would have been better. But then it's like, why don't you just put a hook hanger on the bottom and just put the treble hook on that, you know? I should have just done that. I might experiment with line through stuff more in the future. I should probably just keep it for soft plastic stuff, really unless I think of a better design. Anyway, I'm just excited to show you guys the bonus fishing I got and what I caught. Oh, and before we get into that, ouch, a mini bike just beat me up yesterday. I, I don't know if I hit the muffler with this and it burnt my arm, because it feels like a burn or like that's the chain scrape me or something. Tore up my pants too. You guys remember BJ Pond? BJ Pond, Kevin Bajornson. Around my parts, the Midwest, Iowa, I don't know if he goes to different states to do this kind of work, but if you want the largest selection of fish stocking species in all sizes, pond design and construction, so like literally just building a pond. If you want a pond built, if you need a lake managed, like in an, a lake, doesn't matter the size. Chip, don't eat stuff and then throw it up later tonight. Just anyway, he didn't stay. He just got right up. He's going to go eat stuff and throw up tonight all the way down to like the weed and the algae and the, the identification of it and then the management of it too. And then of course audits with electro fishing, you wanna know exactly what's ever in your body of water. Aeration systems, fountains, artificial habitat, you need structure in your pond. Supplemental feeding programs, automatic feeders that are powered by solar panels and stuff and they, you can put them on timers and you can feed them certain amounts. And it's just, everything's covered. Pond management, bjpond.com, go there. Does he sell feed? He might sell feed on that website, let me check. Oh, he sells a lot. Yeah. Like structure like that in your pond, parts of docks, platforms, pads, pond aeration stuff, the fish feeders, the fish food, the vegetation control products. Sells traps, so if you got like muskrats and stuff that are invading your pond, get some traps, everything. Go to bjpond.com, manage your pond. Keep your pond managed. Nobody likes a dirty, 
scummy, nasty, stinky pond. Keep it clean. Okay, that's enough. Let's get to bonus fishing. On to the next. I have been doing my due diligence, making sure to fish very often this time of the year, keeping a close eye on when the bite starts. You're welcome, everybody. Fish on. It's a dinky bass. Whew. It's official. Bass like Z-Man chatterbaits. Is this a Z-Man? Yeah, the original chatterbait. Be free. I think I just got a fish. Dang! Man, I set the hook on that perfectly. Not to toot my own horn, but this is a, another bass. On the Kitek imitation with a pink jig head. It's official. Bass like jigs pink jigs with the greenish Kitek imitation plastic. Yeah, well, th that size, they're just like bluegill almost. The, yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. bit of a difference to the texture of the meat, but it's, it's pretty good still. I know, we got, we have fish fries all the time. Fish on! Crappie, woo, look at that crappie. That is not a bad crappie. Sorry, I'm talking to the camera now. <laughs> you got a measure, measuring device in that tackle box at all? I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah, there's nothing on it either. It's okay. My giant crappie does not need to be measured. Not bad. Are the crappie spawning? Hmm? Maybe. It's getting close. Woo, that's exciting. That's called a good crappie. Fishing's getting hot, man. Ooh, did you get a good one? Yeah. That's a striper. Is that a wiper? Did you just get a wiper? Oh, it came off? Oh, that's too bad. That felt like it looked huge. Man, that's really too I bad. Not checking my <laughs> that, uh, hey, you got anything heavier? Because all you got is a 116. Yeah, I do. Yes, I do. One moment. Oh, I got it. That's the same fish. That's a wiper. That was a good hit. This is 15 pound test. I'm going to let him have it. This is a good fish. Oh, so you're, you're gonna video him? I'm, I'm recording. Oh, yeah, yeah. He could snap this off too. Woo, good fish on. Oh, that's a good wiper. <laughs> oh, man. This is a good fish. This might be my PB wiper. Come on, boy. Get in here. Come on. That, oh, I have a scale. <laughs> Can you get that bag for me real quick? Bag or bomb? Bag. On a tiny jig. Oh, shoot, I left it at home. Yeah. Okay, I don't have my scale, but that's a good fish. That is a great fish. I'm gonna let him go really quick. Be free. It's official, by the way. Giant 
wiper like jigs. It's official. <laughs> Dude, I, I just randomly found a 130 whopper plopper in the duck pattern. That's awesome. Is that good? Yeah, these are these are great. It's that good. <laughs> 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 Dope. Have to poke. You have to sign papers. Stab. It's getting ruined. We eat stuff and throw up tonight. By now, I don't really care. But there's no going back after that, is there? Makita.